Sweden's regalia are kept deep in the vaults of the Royal Treasury, underneath the Royal Palace in Stockholm, in a museum that is open to the public. The crown of Eric the Fourteenth. It was made in 1561. It is typical of the Renaissance style of jewellery of the time. Originally, his crown bore four pairs of the letter E and R, the initials of the Latin form of his name, Ericus Rex, in green enamel, each pair being on either side of the central stone on the front, sides and back of the circlet. When he was deposed by his brother, John III, John had each of the letters removed, covered with identical cartouches, each set with two pearls. The original Mondon cross at the top of the crown was replaced with a large mond enameled blue with gold star and set with diamond and with a cross of ten diamonds. They also replaced the original pearl on the top of the eight large ornaments on the circlet with diamonds and replaced the pearl cartouches with eight diamond rosettes and moved the circlet 45 degrees. Eric also had a scepter, an orb and a key made for his coronation. The key is an item found only in Swedish regalia. His was made in 1561 and is of gold enameled and set with diamonds, rubies and sapphires. It originally was surmounted by a large round sapphire at the top, enclosed by two intersecting rows of pearls. This sapphire was lost at the baptism of Gustav IV Adolf and was replaced by the present dark blue enamelled orb in 1780. The orb is also of gold and unique among European regalia in that it is engraved and enamelled with a map of the earth according to the cartography at the time it was made. At the top of the orb is a smaller orb in blue enamel and covered with stars, above which is a small cross formed of a table cut diamond surrounded by three pearls. The present blue enamel dates from 1715 and replaces the original black that was badly damaged at the coronation of Charles XI. The original model used for the engraving is not known, but the engraver placed the Northern Hemisphere upside down while placing the names where they would have been if the map were the right side up. The anointing horn was made in 1606 in Stockholm for the coronation of Karl IX and is made of gold in the shape of a bull's horn supported by a pedestal. The large end is closed by a lid with a chain and on the opposite point of the horn a small figure of justice holding a pair of scales. The horn is decorated in ornamental work with multicoloured, opaque and translucent enamel and set with 10 diamonds and 14 rubies, including 6 garnets. The burial crowns, scepters and orbs of King Carl IX and his Queen Christina. Such items are originally interred with the bodies but later have been exhumed and put on display. On July 31st, 2018, thieves stole the crowns and an orb and escaped on a speedboat. The lost regalia were found on the 5th of February 2019. Funerary regalia and the sarcophagus of Eric XIV were also stolen in 2013 but were soon found and are now on display in a special case. As her coronation crown, Christina of Sweden used the crown that her mother, Maria Eleonora of Brandenburg, had used as the Queen Consort of Gustav II Adolf. It was made in Stockholm in 1620 and originally had two arches in a very fine foliage design 
in gold with black enamelling and set with rubies and diamonds. A reference to the colour of the arms of her father, John Sigmund of Brandenburg, with a small blue enamelled mound and cross, both set with diamonds. Christina had two more arches added to her mother's crown, matching the first two and had more diamonds and rubies added to enhance the crown's appearance as the crown of the Queen Regent. She also added a cap of purple satin, embroidered in gold, and set with even more diamonds to the inside of the crown. The circlet of the crown has eight large cubichon rubies set beneath each of the eight arches, and diamonds in large rosette patterns in the intervening spaces of the circlet. The crown of Louisa Ulrika was made in Stockholm in 1751. It is made of silver, set entirely with diamonds. On the circlet rests representations of eight open crowns with trefoils for leaves, the heraldic symbol of Sweden, from back of which rise eight half arches which curls back on themselves at the top where they support a blue enamelled mound and a cross, also set with diamonds. Between each of these eight open crowns are eight small points, each topped with a diamond. Inside the cap is a scarlet cap of velvet strewn with silver sequins. Two large diamonds are set between the circlet and the front crown, the central trefoil in the front of the crown being replaced with a large oval diamond. This is the crown from which Louisa Ulrika removed 44 diamonds and pawned in Berlin to finance her attempted coup in 1756. This is the crown still used on formal occasions such as the royal weddings and funerals of Swedish queen consorts. The crown prince's coronet was made for Charles X Gustav to wear at the coronation of Christina as her designated heir. It was hurriedly made in just two weeks from parts of an earlier queen's crown. It has the form of a radial crown with eight triangular rays or spikes and has survived intact except for the addition by Gustav III for his coronation in 1772 of two black emerald sheaves of grain. The heraldic emblem of the Vasa dynasty, one between the front two rays and another between the back two rays, replacing the smaller ornaments still found between the other rays. Seven similar coronets, but of a simpler design with rays in the central position in the front and back and with eight smaller sheaves of gold between the eight rays were made in the 18th and 19th centuries, set with diamonds, emeralds and pearls. The heraldic crown for a duke, in Sweden always the son of a monarch, or duchess, always the daughter of a monarch or wife of a duke, is depicted as a jeweled radial crown with five rays. In addition to the royal regalia, the royal treasury also includes some jeweled insignia of the Swedish royal orders of chivalry, especially of the Order of the Seraphim, the Order of Charles XIII, the Order of Vasa, the Order of the Polar Star and the Order of the Sword. And this concludes the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please click the like button, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for future videos. Thank you.